So today I'm going to talk to you about um, Victoria's uh, road safety policy. Um, Morris has, has, has talked a bit about it, so I won't um, go too much into detail. And all the sorts of resources that we have for drivers and carers and health professionals. Um, the community education programs that I run. Um, to talk about a couple of other projects that I'm involved in. And obviously we're going to take some questions later. So as we heard uh, today, we don't have age-based testing in, in Victoria and drivers can drive to any age as long as they're safe to do so. Um, as Morris said, on a per licence basis, Victoria as older drivers are at least as safe as those from other jurisdictions that have age-based testing. But at Vic Roads, we're responsible for making sure that people are safe to drive, so you might have to come in and provide a medical uh, report or undertake an on-road test. And it is the law that drivers advise Vic Roads if they've got any permanent or long-term injury or illness that may impair their ability to drive. This is not well known in the community. When I go out and do the talks to the community groups, I didn't know they had to report conditions. I go and do a talk to a diabetes support group where everybody there has got diabetes and nobody's reported it to Vic Roads. <laughs> They will turn and look at each other. I even bring on medical report forms, you know, for them. You can pop up and just take one of these. It'll save you making a phone call to Vic Rhodes. But we do rely on the health professionals to advise patients, to, um, you know, which are the reportable conditions because we don't want patients to self-diagnose about what does and doesn't have to be reported to Vic Rhodes, OK? <coughs> so we really rely on the health professionals to provide that advice. Vic Rhodes isn't going to come knocking on your door to see what medical conditions you've got that you haven't, been, that you haven't reported. But as it's been mentioned before, you're, you're really driving uninsured if you haven't reported a reportable medical condition to Vic Roads. Okay? You're driving uninsured. If your insurance company finds out that you had a medical condition that you didn't report, and they're likely to void your insurance. They can't ring up Vic Roads and ask what medical conditions you've got because we can't tell you that, that because of the Privacy Act. But if they find out some other way, then um, you, you may not have any insurance. And also, if you hurt somebody, they can sue you because you're really driving illegally if you haven't reported those medical conditions. So that's a really important uh, message to get across to, to your clients. And that's one that I get across to um, the older driver groups that I speak to, and that really hits home. That if they're driving with no insurance, they sort of go, hmm. So what's going to happen if you have a minor crash? The other driver, you know, get out to exchange uh, names and addresses and you get out with a walking stick. The driver's going to say to his insurance company, that woman who hit me, is she supposed to be driving? She walks with a walking stick. No insurance. So the, the topic um, of my presentation today is um, notifying Vic Roads, is that enough? Um, for drivers it is, as I said, drivers have to report medical conditions that may affect safe driving to Vic Roads and if they do that then we take it from there. But from health professionals, no it's not enough, it's, it's only one part of the process. Um, as health professionals, you need to routinely um, consider fitness to drive and, and mobility issues for your clients. You need to advise the drivers of which conditions are reportable, as I've mentioned before. And record that advice and action in your case notes, as Morris alluded to. Make sure that you've covered yourself. Give the, pe give the person the, the advice and then write down that you gave them the advice, so you've at least covered your, yourself in case something ends up in court. Um, and also, um, you need to support drivers and, and carers with mobility transitions. And follow up, if you've given people advice, um, follow up on that advice. <coughs> Don't just think that once off is enough. Obviously people who lack insight, if you give them advice, um, they're not going to take it. So you, perhaps you can get through to the families instead. Uh, in the end, end of the day, you just report them to Vic Roads. As Morris said, you can't be sued for reporting in good faith. Vic Rose has got a lot of resources which we are um, uh, designed to help assist you. Um, we've heard about medical review from Morris uh, earlier. We've got licensing provisions such as the conditional licences so they can provide people with some sort of a, a mobility that's in line with their abilities. And we've got resources, paper resources and also web pages which I'm going to talk to you about. So the resources are really there to support you, to, to support health professionals and carers and drivers to understand how a licensing system works and that what people's obligations are. Our Victorian Older Drivers Handbook um, is out on the table. All, all the resources I'm talking about today are, are in the resource room and lots of people came by at lunchtime to pick them up, which was good. So this is the most popular requested um, publication from Vic Roads and the older drivers really like it and it, it does set out their legal obligations and reporting medical conditions, so that's one way to get a, uh, the message across to them or to, or to their families. Um, it's got a self-assessment checklist to see if any sort of driving problems have crept up on you over the years um, from when you first got your licence. 
It talks about medical conditions and medicines and right through to planning for change. So it'd be great to think that we could all drive to the day we die, but we probably won't be able to. So uh, planning for that time when you don't drive anymore is, is really important. It's, we've heard how devastating it is to, to have your licence taken away from you, but at least if you've planned for, for getting around some other way, um, it, it's, it makes it a, a lot easier decision. Now, I developed some web pages uh, late last year when we, we launched them with Victoria Police. So what I've done with the Older Drivers Handbook is I've put it up on web pages on VicRoad's website and the uh, URL is there. So if you don't have a copy of the Older Drivers Handbook but you want to see something about the information in there, um, there's the URL for that. The other thing which is really important, a website that I developed last year, web pages, is one for concerned family and friends of older or impaired drivers, okay? That bit of information wasn't out there uh, in, the, in the community. So what do you do um, if you are concerned about someone uh, being an impaired driver, be it a family member or, or a close friend? What action can you take? And I'll just show you what those uh, web uh, pages look like. Uh, that's the older driver one, and uh, down the side is, is the equivalent to the chapters. And they've got drop-down boxes up the top and you can get all the information um, that you need from the Older Driver Handbook there. And this is the, what the family and friends uh, website web pages look like. So if you go down the side, it talks about the ageing driver. So what were the normal processes associated with ageing? Uh, medical conditions and medicines and how they affect driving. The warning signs, what to look for. I mean, is, your, is your older dr driver, is your um, um, family member really impaired or not? Is this normal signs of ageing and what should I be looking for? It uh, talks about how driving skills deteriorate uh, as we age and helping them stay on the road. So these pages aren't about putting older drivers or impaired drivers off the road. Uh, if, they're, if they're too impaired to be on the road, okay, we don't want them on there. But there may be some ways that you can help them stay on the road. So maybe they just need to reduce their, their driving. Maybe they drive to the train station and get the train into, into, into Melbourne or something like that rather than drive all the way. So there is some information there about helping them to stay on the road going to the doctors with them and, and discussing driving, make sure that driving's brought up. Um, then there's the alternatives to driving, um, so helping them to, to get around some other way. And there's a section on reporting, so that talks about the uh, driver's obligation to report medical conditions uh, to Vic Roads that may affect driving, and also um, if all else fails and you need to report someone to Vic Roads, how you go about that. So I think you'll find that this, um, these web pages will be really useful to you in your setting and um, I encourage you to have a look and, and see what you think and give me feedback if you like. And it also talks about what, what the law is. Um, a few of the resources. Um, there's a medical review fact sheet out on the resource table so it explains how a medical review system works. So that might be something that you can hand uh, to your patients because um, the first um, thing that, that people find out about how our licensing system works is when they get that letter from VicRoad saying you've been reported and you've got to, you know, here's your medical report form and you've got to go and get it filled in and they don't even know how the system works. So that, that's a good brochure to give out to your clients. <coughs> Um, we've got brochures on specific medical conditions, uh, diabetes and glaucoma and seizures and sleep apnea. And dementia was a new one um, that I developed last year. Uh, that was developed on request um, from occupational therapists uh, because they wanted to be able to hand that bit of information across to carers. It's really the carers that we need to get to when, we, when we're talking about cognitive decline. Um, Alzheimer's Australia in, endorsed the content in the brochure and it talks about people's responsibilities and, and how Vic Roads can support uh, safe driving. It talks about assessments and licensing provisions. And it also talks about other resources such as the dementia hotline. So that's out on the table for you to pick up as well. And a lot of my brochures, are, the information is on the Vic Roads web pages too. Um, uh, there was a doctor speaking this morning, Chris, who, who talked about this research. So basically some uh, doctors at Monash University um, did some, a survey of doctors and the results that came back from the doctors was that um, the doctors were saying things like, well, we don't think that we should have to make the licensing decision, we think it should be Vic Roads. Well, as we've, as we've heard today over and over again, it is Vic Roads. Um, we think that Vic Roads should um, provide us with education in assessing fitness to drive. Well, I've actually got a program on that that's available from our website, which I'll, I'll talk to you about. So there was a lot of misinformation out there uh, for the doctors, and so we produced this um, fact sheet in conjunction with the people that conducted the research. It explains the, the role of the doctors versus the role of Vic Roads, and it very clearly points out that Vic Roads is the decision maker. So that way that preserves the doctor-patient relationship, okay? The doctor can say, look, it's, it's not my decision, okay? Vic Roads will be making the decision. Um, it also talks about um, using occupational therapists for community assessment initially. So 
A lot of um, doctors are hesitant to bring up driving. They don't want to say to their patient, I don't think you should drive anymore. Um, but they could refer your patient to an occupational therapist, a generalist OT, and they look at that person's whole life style, all, all aspects of their life, and that will include driving. So once again, that helps to maintain that doctor-patient relationship where the doctor isn't saying, I don't think you should drive. Put it in the hands of the OT. Uh, no, not, 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 a, not a driving assessor, just a, a generalist OT who, who comes, comes to the house and looks at all aspects of the person's lifestyle, you know, and, and management of that lifestyle, and they can bring up driving as well. Can they? Thank you, OTs. <laughs> um, so this uh, GP fact sheet, there's copies out there on the table for you, and um, that was uh, sent out with the, the hard copy of the new guidelines to all the doctors, which they should get shortly. Okay, Safe Drive Medical is the name of the education program that I developed several years ago. Uh, it's accessible from um, Vic Road's website and it, it takes you through assessing a patient's fitness to drive. So there's professional development points allocated for doctors, optometrists and OTs. So OTs can go on there and do the course and get their, their points for it. Um, I've updated in line with the, with the new uh, guidelines and that's the, how you access it from the Vic Road's website. And I'll just show you um, what that looks like. The modules, um, road trauma statistics, ethics and law, driver licences, the health standards, health professional practice, referrals, medical and non-medical, some case studies to cement the information, and there's active learning modules in there. And one of those active learning modules, um, which uh, I thought about today when someone else is talking, is actually um, going through your uh, client's uh, list of clients and, and finding out, do you, do you really know who drives and who doesn't drive? Who's got a licence and who hasn't? Is it a heavy vehicle licence? So that was one of, one of the exercises in that active learning module. And this is what the uh, website uh, looks like. Just go into there, you have to register. Anybody can, can go in and do this course. You don't need to be a health professional. All you have to do is set yourself up with a, a username and password and you can take yourself through the modules and you will learn more about assessing fitness to drive and obviously we're all interested in that because that's what we're here for today. So once you've registered, um, you can log in and start and um, you can, if you haven't completed a particular module and you log out, it will take you back to where you were in that module. So it puts the modules up there on the front screen so you can see which ones you've done and which ones you haven't, uh, when you started and finished it, how much of one you've done, and you can just work your way through those modules uh, in any order that you like. So I'd encourage you to, um, to go on a, and look at that uh, program and once again give me feedback on it. We've heard about the, the guidelines from Fiona this morning and as she said there's a focus on the key chronic conditions, um, it also talks about the role of practical driver assessments in there because once again the doctors were saying, you know, we need some help here and so we could actually get a practical uh, driving assessment from an OT and, and it also talks about the role of generalist OTs as well. So that was new information that was added in that, that wasn't in previous versions. Fiona talked about this um, publication today up on the screen. There's also, those are in the resource room. Um, Austrades have updated their, uh, their website and there's got the client information sheet there. There's links on their website to state-based resources and um, obviously as part of the implementation, um, there's soft copies available for people and then hard copies out to all health professionals. So um, we've also got a couple of resources on, on managing transitions because some people need to be managed through that transition from driving to non-driving. Um, <clears throat> As um, someone mentioned this morning, maybe Therese said, um, you know, have the, have the discussion early uh, in, in it. Don't, don't wait until um, there's been a, a crash or there's been a, an, in, an incident before you start talking about making that transition with some of your clients. Um, the red flags to look for, you know, the um, ding, dings in the car and the scrapes on the, on the gatepost and things like that. And link in with all the other resources that are available. There's a Disabled Motorist Association, there's a Dementia Hotline. Um, you can also contact Vic Road's Medical Review uh, for advice in confidence. Um, there's a separate phone number for health professionals that's in, in the contacts in the, in the back of your guidelines. We've got a, a book on motorised mobility scooters and, and electric wheelchairs. So these are the people who, who need um, some help with their mobility. So the eligibility to use them is that you actually can't walk or you have difficulty walking. So they're not for people who don't drive anymore just decide to hang up their keys. They're only for people who have a mobility issue. It talks about all the, all, you're laughing at me. <laughs> and yeah, and, and, any, and anybody can go out and buy one. 
and um, the retailers will sell them to anybody. So it goes through all the information in there, including, including the pedestrian road rules, which a lot of people um, aren't aware of. And there's getting around without a car, uh, is a brochure. Now, unfortunately, it's very uh, metro-centric, but we did contact some um, uh, people in our rural re areas to ask us, uh, to uh, tell us what sort of information we could put it in there, which would be more helpful to people in rural areas, but they didn't really come back with uh, anything worthwhile. One, one guy said it was fantastic, don't change anything. And one person said, um, oh, you need to put all the services in there for all the different regions. Well, we can't do that in one publication, so um, your input or feedback on that publication and what, how we could improve it would also be of benefit to Vic Roads. Um, I run community education programs on request, so probus clubs and um, chronic disease support groups. I basically cover the uh, content of the Older Drivers Handbook. I also do pedestrian talks to community health centres when they have a falls prevention program. And um, I do mobility scooter talks as well to local government. They put on a mobility scooter day, um, support groups and scope. I also um, scope train people to train um, disabled people um, how to use scooters, so the people with cerebral palsy and things like that. So I'm part of that training program and teach them what they need to know so they can teach the people on the, uh, mob on the, on the powered wheelchairs, basically. Um, one of the projects that I um, conducted recently was to send out um, in a community mobility kit uh, all, all, a range of all my brochures. Um, so older drivers and younger drivers are all out there on the table. I sent it to about 100 pilot health centres, some rural, um, some, some metro, and I included an evaluation form in there asking people, did, had, did they know about the brochures? Would they be useful? Would they order them again? And so all the feedback we got was really positive. So um, I think you, hopefully that you'll find that those brochures are, and the information in them very helpful as well. The other study that I'm involved in is a longitudinal study of older um, healthy drivers. Eight, they have to be 75 years um, plus to be um, in the study. Morris is also involved in it. It's a five year study conducted through Monash University with participants from Canada, New Zealand and Victoria. And it's a naturalistic driving uh, over time study. So there's a, like a black box in these people's cars and we're gonna collect data on them for five years. So everywhere they went, how many crashes they had, how fast they drove, what route they took, everything's gonna be captured for five years. And also uh, their health status is gonna be measured. So it was measured before they came to take part in the study and it will be measured um, at the end as well. <laughs> Hopefully they're still, still around. Um, we, we did talk, um, Richard spoke this morning about screening tools, getting a good screening tool which is going to be able to screen whether someone's can fit to drive or not fit to drive, going to crash, not going to crash. At the moment, as Richard said, there isn't one of those around, but one of the outcomes from this five-year study hopes to actually develop that screening tool to be able to make a, a licensing decision on whether someone's fit to drive or not. And also um, look at training for older drivers to see if that might be able to improve them, their driving. So in conclusion, notifying Vic Roads, is that enough? No, it's not. If you diagnose a serious or chronic medical condition which may affect the ability to drive, then tell your patient to report it. Really importantly, record that advice in your notes and then follow up and ask them have they, have they reported it. And if they can't, if, if, they, if they haven't, there's no family available to, to tap into, then you report them to Vic Roads. Um, you, can't, you can't get in trouble for reporting someone only to find out that they were fit to drive but you could get into trouble for not reporting someone who ended up not fit to drive. Obviously, you've got to um, assess their ability to drive and provide treatment. What you think you can do for their medical conditions is going to make them a safer driver. And please utilise uh, Vic Road's resources and supports. So there, there's really an ongoing need to, to educate health professionals and drivers and carers about their obligations and about the options available to them. Thank you. Thank you.